last question, do you have any particular objections to any grant that Mary Ellen sponsored? Um, I looked over Mary Ellen's grants quickly, and all I, I did not have time to look at the actual grant request. I just looked at the grants in terms of the organizations, and nothing jumped out at me as horrible. The, the point here is not that the recipients of the grants are necessarily horrible. Some of these are really good places. For example, the journal article mentions $40,000 going to the food bank. I think that's great. I think tax dollars ought to go to help the food bank. That's not my problem. My problem is the process, because by getting that money, that is being used to control legislators to make things happen and build up the power of leadership. So no, I do not have any problem with any of the grants that I saw in the list. That she sponsored. That she sponsored, yes, that she sponsored. If you um, read every word of that story, you'll see there were some other grants that were featured. Were there any read that you thought were an inappropriate use of tax dollars? Yes. From the pri okay. Yes, absolutely. I thought the tax dollars to buy Little League uniforms is absolutely inappropriate. If Little League wants to have tax dollars used to buy those uniforms, then it ought to come out of the municipality in which they live. Let their town, if their town wants to use tax dollars for that, that's totally appropriate. That's the choice of the people in the town and it's not being used uh, to buy votes. I think sports and organized sports for young people is a wonderful thing. But when I see the needs in the state of Rhode Island and I see our Rhode Island taxpayer dollars, I want to see that money going to alleviate humanitarian issues, not buying really fancy uniforms so somebody can get their picture taken in the local paper and look really good. How about private clubs? Open to only people of certain um, religious persuasions, men only, Italians of a certain uh, part of Italy only, they all have different requirements. And by the way, you have to keep the handshakes in Yeah. Um, I absolutely think that those kinds of things should just not qualify. I think what we should look at are nonprofit organizations that have a specifically humanitarian purpose, that are really helping our most vulnerable citizens. And they should be open and, and, um, and totally transparent. I'm arguing for an open and transparent system, and I think that the organizations that get these grants should also be organizations that are open and transparent. Reverend, okay. on, that, on that basis, one of the criticisms has been that post-grant, there is apparently no audit process, there's apparently no accountability. Apparently, take the money and run. And so after you have the big check ceremony. Right, so let me uh, explain why I created a two-tier system. Maybe it would be a three-tier system. Maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's another number. But I think the point is this. There are some small organizations out there that do some pretty meaningful work with very limited populations. And for those organizations, five to seven hundred dollars in providing food for a small group of people that are somehow missed by our safety net, I have no problem with that. It would put in a system where it'd be fairly simple to get the grant and the reporting back process, and there would have to be a reporting back process, would be fairly simple. I think if somebody is getting forty thousand dollars, the process ought to be a little more rigorous, and the reporting system ought to be a little more rigorous. We can work out the details, but this sense of proportionality. If you if you're getting forty thousand dollar grant, you probably have some staff who could put some things together. If you're asking for five hundred, I mean, I worked with a lot of these small mom and pop nonprofits, and there are families out there that fall between the cracks, and they don't have the resources to fill out big fancy applications. I think we can figure out a way to accommodate that and know what's going on. And that's why the commission should have members that are members of the legislature and members of the community as well who know who these organizations are and can help make that determination. Do we still call you the Reverend Donnie Anderson and are you currently affiliated with any church, parish, council? Sure. So uh, technically, you know, for official kinds of things, it's the Reverend Dr. Donnie Anderson. In this campaign, and for 99% of my life, even in my church, it's Donnie, okay? I, um, I think it's really important that our leaders realize that none of us are any more important than anybody else. 
We're all trying to figure this out together. And we live in a marvelous state and we're surrounded by some pretty incredible people, but none of us are more important than the other. And so I use Donnie, and yes, I am half-time minister of a United Church of Christ, Pilgrim United Church of Christ in New Bedford, Massachusetts. So I commute, I live here right down the street and I commute back and forth. And it's a wonderful break for me to have, to be able to uh, act out and, and live in the two really important areas of my life. And it is a part-time position. Almost everybody here has another job. Right, yeah, this is definitely a half-time position. Yeah. And um, a lot of the work actually now, because of the way work is done, it's done from my office in my home. And uh, the times when I'm most in need at the church is not when the legislature's meeting. So for me, it's kind of an ideal separation of uh, work. Will you be reaching out with this pledge to try to get other folks who are either currently elected or grassroots opposition to the power elite to sign on to this pledge with you? So today I want to reach out to Senator Goodwin. That's my focus today. Uh, I will be happy to share this and encourage other legislators to sign on to this, especially after I'm elected. But right now, my focus is winning this election and talking to my opponent about her record. Not about personality, not about anything else, but about record. And she has a record here. She has really used this system. And I think when you use taxpayer dollars to influence other legislators to go your way, I think that's bankrupt, and I, I don't think it's appropriate, and I think we need to change that. Some of the uh, grants that went out seem to, in my mind anyway, uncomfortably close to church-state state separation. It seems to violate that in some way. They're thinking about the ones that go to the abortion counseling or even to the Masons, you know, the Freemasons and stuff. And so there's a lot, that, that seems to be another issue. It's like a way of bypassing that. Can you speak to that as a minister? Absolutely, and that's why I... Um, suggested here briefly but we would go into more detail i have no problem with a nonprofit who is faith-based applying for money for humanitarian need for example there are some small churches that actually run some pretty effective food closets mm -hmm. out of a small space and they give food to anybody who walks in the door you need food you get it you don't have to be a member of the congregation you don't have to do that i don't have a problem with that i do have a problem with, uh, there was a mention in the article about one organization that bought some sort of vestments or using the money for any sort of religious purpose. State money should not be used for that. Let me just tell you a true story about me today. I really want to use a platform today and have my uh, little sign in front, right? Uh, our yard signs won't be here till Thursday, but I do want to wait till Thursday so I could have official signs. So I said, well, we'll go today without the official signs. I couldn't find a podium last minute. But I was at my office in New Bedford last night. I could have easily brought a podium from my church and used it today. There is no way that I was going to use a church-owned podium for a political event. Yeah. We need to make that a firewall that cannot be penetrated. And anything that even smells like it's crossing the line ought not to be engaged in. We need to keep that line ever so separate and I'll and I'll tell you why I feel that way as a religious person whenever the faith-based community and the state get too close the faith-based community always loses always 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 it's not good Roger Williams had a great idea it was radical then it seems to be just about as radical now as it was back then but I believe in that uh, with everything that I am and uh, absolutely. That's why I said humanitarian purposes only, clearly and explicitly. Also, one other thing. Um, in your article, they mentioned um, Blake Filippi has an ongoing lawsuit on this, correct? And so I was wondering if you've talked to Blake at all or if you're interested in pursuing that or how that would look, how that would stand. So I noticed, I, I read with interest about that lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I had heard about it before and it just hadn't really penetrated. Um, not sure. Blake and I probably have bumped into each other in this building. I mean, we both logged in enough hours here. To sure. Sure. But I don't have any specific recollection. Uh, my guess is that probably 99% of the positions I take politically would be different than his. But this is one where I think he's 100% right. Yeah. And, um, and, and certainly uh, agree with what he's doing. And would be, you know, I haven't thought about 
joining him in any particular way, but certainly I would testify in behalf of this and uh, work to see him be successful in that because this, look, we all know this. There isn't somebody, no one is standing around here, you know, thinking like they don't know this doesn't happen. It happens all the time and nobody wants to raise their hand and say, we need to call a halt to this. Mm. Well, I'm not beholden to anybody. I don't owe anybody anything. I've got nothing to lose. All I have is my integrity and I want to run on what I think is best for the people of Rhode Island and best for the people of Senate District 1. And so I'm going to raise my hand. Sorry, I jumped in. No, no, sorry. Okay. I'm going to have to scoop. My last question is, are you running with the co-op or are you running under somebody else's? Umbrella? No, I am running alone. Okay. I have been endorsed uh, by the Queer Pack, and I'm very pleased to have their endorsement. I have applied for the endorsement in several other organizations. I have heard from one that's not public yet. Uh, but um, So I have applied for endorsements, but I'm not uh, affiliated with the co-op. I have great friends that are running with the co-op and, um, you know, care for some of those pe a lot of those people. But um, I, uh, I decided to um, run alone and do my own campaign.